Well, well, well. Lord Taco, it's finally here. The We've greatest made week it. the entire year. Yes. We have made it. It's Bonnaroo week. And if you're listening to this, you're either doing your last minute packing or you're on the road. Uh, we recorded um, a Do's and Don'ts, which is one of our most popular shows every year. We actually recorded it a couple of weeks ago in hopes that it would come out uh, this past week. And we got a, not a surprise guest because we knew it was coming, but something like that, you you know, you don't count on. I didn't even speak of it until it was over. I don't think I told anybody until it actually happened. And, of course, we're talking about Jim James from My Morning Jacket. If you listen to this show at all, you know I'm kind of a, kind of a stan when it comes to uh, <laughs> if I can be the old guy and use a... <laughs> yeah, as the hams would say. You as stand. the hams would say, yeah. I'm stan, for sure. Um, that was so great. That was amazing. Um, I, you know, we I, when we hung up, I just it kept thinking about it. He was in Belgium. He called right on the exact same time he was, you know, supposed to call. And was just amazing. I couldn't believe how uh, open and forthcoming. And I mean, oh, I know, yeah, yeah. I think we cut him off, or not cut him off, really, but he would have kept talking, is what I mean. I felt like we could have hung out with him all day, and you know, Absolutely. maybe maybe one day we can. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, so cool. But anyway, uh, so if some of the things we say in this episode um, are a little bit. Uh, dated it's because we recorded it a couple weeks ago like i said but these are our some of our tips there's so many tips uh if you haven't left yet the bonnaroo website has a lot of information things like um, activating your wristbands and uh, you can go ahead and buy merch um, when to arrive right they've got some times that they anticipate is going to be more crowded and less crowded so you could, there's a lot of information on that. Yeah, and have they ever done that before? I thought that was kind of cool, where it shows the average wait time uh, hourly for each day. No, because why would they? Yeah, I mean that'd have been a, that'd have been a bad PR move <laughs> on their part. <laughs> yeah, don't show up. <laughs> yeah. Anytime. <laughs> So no, this is uh, we're making fun, obviously, but it's in, you know they're trying to figure out ways to get people in quicker. Um, to alleviate long lines and long waits and good for them uh, also the app uh, is now available right it is and i got it did you get it yes okay yes, yeah i haven't um, played with it yet after we and i guess maybe we should take credit for getting them to get the app out <laughs> of course they can't prove <laughs> otherwise as i you always can't say. say yep that's right <laughs> so no very good it looks like it's uh much more improved updated for um you know, this year versus previous years. And also, you remember uh, Brad complaining about the schedule on the website, how it's unreadable in that long, narrow, you know, sideways format. They've updated that too on the nice. website. Very nice. Spend some time with it because as we say in this show and we say all the time, the uh, sales service is very, very spotty on the farm. Uh, so, Especially this year when we're basically sold out or at least at yeah. capacity absolutely it's so anything you can do ahead of time like your wristbands or study it print it out you know whatever schedule write it down however you prefer to do it but uh, i wouldn't count on being able to have the phone in front of your face 24 7 yeah don't count on it don't count on it because it won't happen um all right, so what else? We get into a lot of that, but we just wanted to do a quick intro and uh, wish everybody a, a safe travel, a quick travel, and uh, see you on the farm, right? That's right, and um, yeah, this is this is the last time, this is our last show before we get on site, right? So Yeah, and uh, you and I don't really know yet who all we will be seeing or talking to or interviewing or what we'll be doing yet. So yeah, there's some things in the air that we've discussed that hopefully we can get to, but like last year, sometimes things just fall into place last minute, like that church's interview. Yeah. Still one of my all time favorite. Yeah. Yeah. That was great. And, uh, Isaiah Rashad, you know, with the mayor mm -hmm. showing up and giving him a, uh, key to the city and all that. So 
anyway, we'll see you guys. Um, happy Rue. Radiate, man. Radiate, radiate. It's here. Yep. See you on the farm. It's that time of year, kids, where we start looking at the long-range forecasts and realizing it's useless. Happy uh, happy Bonnaroo. Uh, it's Barry Corder, Lord Taco, Brad Steiner. Uh, just days away from Bonnaroo 2023. Have we checked the long-term forecast yet? <laughs> I haven't, but I'm laughing because it's now we've spent all year planning, 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 and now it's time to tear all of that up and just uh-huh. go. <laughs> <laughs> and just go yeah whether what it's your the... schedule or your or the weather or whatever everything changes yeah. once it actually happens <laughs> yeah i uh i know it is absolutely useless to do the long range forecast but i feel like the moment i look that's when i'm officially in the mood right like <laughs> yeah. the i'm in bonnaroo mode as soon as i look at you know the 30 day long range forecast um i just want to check it out just in case and i know it's not going to necessarily be right but let's just see if we get a can we get a two week out oh yeah two that weeks. weekend is out yeah and uh we're, we're looking at highs in the mid 80s and uh somewhere between 30 and 60 percent chance of showers that's a pretty good start i uh i don't mind that start no that's now, if you're telling bad. me th- Tell me, 50-50 chance of rain and mid-80s? Oh, I'm taking that yeah, every time, man. Uh, absolutely. Uh, As opposed yeah, to how's... mid-90s and no rain. No, no Whole kidding. How's that? Because, because, by the way, when it says mid-90s, it's 103. Yeah. <laughs> it's 103. Uh, how's everyone doing? Everyone's how's every... how... Yeah. Feels like I haven't seen you guys in a while. I don't really? Know why. Yeah, I don't why? Know why? I don't know. Just feels like We talk been every a while. day. I know. Just feels like it's been a while. I don't know why. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Ta- Taco, do we have a bus update 2023? I do have a bus update for you. And do we want not- to do it now or we want to wait? Let's do it now. It's not good news. Okay. Um, oh, he's, no. Yeah, he split the case open and it's not reusable at all. So he's going to have to source a whole new case, crank, everything. Okay. Wow. I'm going to pretend I know what any of those words mean. It sounds bad. <laughs> That's really bad. Is that well, a tear? The case tier? is, is, that the, a, case is, is that the only thing that you can't. The case is the only part you can't buy new. You have to reuse a case. So if mine's not reusable, okay. you got to start somewhere else. Okay. Is this an emotional right. type type news thing for you, or uh, you it's not prepared? great news? But yeah. I, you know, I was kind of prepared for it. So yeah, you are prepared. It's, it's, so are we ready to say the backup plan yet? Backup plan is in motion. I'm picking it up this week. Okay. What are we are we saying? What the backup plan is? Or you still want to wait to? Do the big reveal. We'll do the big reveal. We'll do the big reveal on okay. the farm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. Nice. What yeah. woman are you shoving in that trunk <laughs> to bring along with you? I don't know who's going to pop out of this cake. Yeah. He's still vetting applicants. <laughs> yeah. That's what he is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fax me if, you, uh, if you're interested in. Uh, um, the, yeah. uh, it's just going to take longer. That's it. I mean. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, today on the show, uh, Bonna do's, Bonna don'ts, Rua do, do a roo, Bonna roo do's and don'ts, our annual uh, exploration through the things that we've learned over the, I mean, I've done 16 years. Barry, are you 16 or 17? Uh, I think we're, I think you're one ahead of me, right? Because you, okay. you went one year prior than I did. Maybe. I went to the yeah. first one, but I didn't start. Till oh seven, and I've been okay. Every then year. Ta- then Taco, are you at three or four now? This will be my fourth. I've been to three. So it's so we're over thirty Bonnaroo's in between the three of us, and uh, with all that expertise, we're going to try and uh, give you as comprehensive of a list of Bonnaroo do's and don'ts uh, today on the What Podcast. But uh, let's start uh, with something that uh, I guess I uh, something I did this past week, mm-hmm. which was one of the highlights of my my adult life. So I grew up in Richmond, Virginia, uh, and we spent most of our time in DC being a short drive to DC. So, uh, a lot of, you know, DC culture sort of uh, just made its way into my life. One thing in particular was a, uh, a bar slash music venue called the nine Thirty club. Well, the nine Thirty club hosted every great rock band, uh, that's ever existed. I'll never forget sneaking in with a, a friend's brother 
to a bad brain show and being teeny tiny little Brad kid, uh, seeing 400 people slam dancing, beating the hell out of each other. I walked in about 30 seconds later, turned right around and walked out. Uh, <laughs> not, this is not for me. Uh, and that was the only time I ever actually walked into the 930 club. It closed and then uh, reopened in a much bigger space. Well, the owner of the 930 club, the current 930 club, has reopened a replica of the old 930 club in D.C. right next to the new 930 club. They're calling the new old 930 club the Atlantis. And uh, inside the Atlantis, for the very first show this week, they had the Foo Fighters for 450 people. Uh, one of the biggest tickets that you could probably ever find on the East Coast. And, you know, through the first year of the Atlantis, they're doing 44 shows, and they sold all 44 shows out, all for $45 a ticket. So to get this Foo Fighters ticket, it was incredibly hard to get, but it was $44. Um, it was absolutely incredible. I took Evan Bonnaroo down with me. I made him drive. Uh, I made him pay for the hotel. Uh, I made him pay for drinks and uh, gas and tolls. Uh, but nonetheless, he got in. What a what a steal for the forty five dollar <laughs> ticket price. But uh, so the inside is is so so reminiscent of the nine thirty club. I don't know if you've, if we have anybody that's listening that it has ever been, but there used to be this catbird seat. There was a pole right in the middle of the room, and there was a seat on top of the pole, and the guy would sit up there all show, feet dangling, uh, videoing whatever show was on stage and it was kind of obtrusive but it was silly it's like well, this is just such a strange that is weird. thing to be right in the middle of the venue they brought the catbird seat back it's right on the left of the stage um there's the old street sign the pole where like on f street and uh, whatever the cross street was they've got the pole on the rooftop uh bar uh they even have like a, a they've built like the street scape of what the street looked like in the wow. mid nineties, um, upstairs in the bar, they've got all kinds of history painted all over the uh, plaster, all over the walls of, you know, former shows that, uh, were at the nine thirty club. So the space in and of itself was just immaculately done. I was totally convinced I was walking into them, like rolling on paint, um, drying as soon as we, uh, get there because they got their building permit on Thursday. The show was a Tuesday. So, um, or their occupancy permit, rather. So the place was immaculate. The show was unlike anything that I've, I've really witnessed. To see that big of a band in that small of a space, 450 people with the Foo Fighters, uh, it kept, I kept thinking through the entire set about Bonnaroo and all of the things that we had assumed about this Foo Fighters show going into Bonnaroo weekend. And I kind of feel like I need to change my expectations for this Foo Fighters show. Okay. How so? I know, I know that we've been talking a lot about this being an epic Foo Fighters show, and it will be, but lasting until, you know, Monday morning, you know, four or five hour show uh, because of the history of what they've always done. They love playing for a very long time. If you look at any show that they've done, they haven't gone more than 22 songs. Any of these shows uh, so far in this in this uh, in this run, they've only done about two and a half hours, and they had every opera. Now I don't know if they could have gone past midnight. Apparently, there's a curfew in DC, so I, I it wouldn't have mattered what have happened at DC. They had to stop at 12, but they did 22 songs. If you look at the show before that. They did 20 songs. Before that, 21 songs. I don't know if we're getting a three-and-a-half-hour Foo Fighters set right. at Bonnaroo anymore. I feel like my expectations for that are now completely different. Um, I I think you might see something that's just two-and-a-half, 245, uh, with fireworks at the end. Um, with that being said, though, even though they're only doing... 22 songs at this show the set list was really tight and what they're doing with this they're letting the songs breathe a little bit more they're finding more moments to i guess for lack of a better term jam um they're playing with with breakdowns 
Uh, they're giving, you know, more solo times. And Josh Freeze sounds incredible. Absolutely incredible. Uh, I, they're probably also doing 22 songs because, you know, Josh has got to get up to speed. He can't play everything that they've ever known like Taylor could have when, you know, they did an hour of Rolling Stone show, uh, songs at the Metro show after Lollapalooza a couple years ago. So there's probably a lot of a lot of things here, but I'm starting to reevaluate how much we're going to get on the farm. Yeah. A couple of things, I guess. I mean, that makes perfect sense, but one thing uh, that may may play different and and I have no information. You already know way more than I do. Um but the idea of having people sit in, you know, would that change? Oh yeah. Would that change things, you know? It's Well, he he's definitely having people he Dave and uh, the fight, Foo Fighters are having people sit in. Like he had his daughter come to two songs. Um you know, I I think there's been a couple of other pop-ins so far like in the Boston Calling show and the other festival that they did. So yes, I, I totally anticipate somebody coming in. In fact, at the, at the 930 Club show, the owner, I think, demanded to play drums with them wow. at the show. Wow. So they brought him out to play uh, drums during uh, Big, uh, Big Me, which is, by all accounts, by Dave's account, the easiest Foo Fighters song to play. And it was hysterical how slow it was, <laughs> how slow, like the drummer changed everything, you know, like the owner who is a, he's a fine drummer, but he just doesn't, you know, he's not a professional, you know, member of the Foo Fighters. And it was just so slow. You could see all the guys looking around and be like, uh, what in the world is happening? So yeah, I can, I don't think they have any fear of putting anybody and everybody right. on stage with them. And that, that could possibly, uh, you know, uh, change things a little bit, but I think that you're nibbling around the edges at that point, you know? Yeah. Um, I, maybe, I, maybe, maybe it goes from a 22 set to a song set to maybe a 28 song yeah, set, 30 enough. songs. Yeah. Set. Okay. All right. That makes sense. But man, it's, it's good. It, they sounded great. And Josh freeze, you know, he doesn't miss a, you know, I don't think the band has missed a, missed a beat. They sound fantastic. It's interesting. We've, in the old days, the 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 long sets and the people sitting in and all old days of Bonnaroo was the norm, and we've heard from you know the people with the festival that put it on say it's the, the shortened sets are because that's what the bands ask for. You know, as fans, I think we sometimes think well they can just play as long as they want to, but there's road crew, light crew, sound crew. Those guys all have to get paid. You know, they're all, a lot of them are union. There's a lot of things that we don't even know about. So, you know. I, yeah, but the second, and the second that you go over, uh, the band after you has a plane to catch. Well, that doesn't happen, you know, this with, because they'll be the last band on sa Sunday and that there's curfews and all that. So that's, that's the only reason I think we're speculating that it could go longer than, than usual. Um, but, you know, it's still going to be a I, good I just, show. I just, uh, I don't know, and maybe there was a part of me that just wanted them to go forever sure. and uh, play for the, the, but then again, you know, that Metro show that I was at, it, it feels like it lives in legend and lives in lore, but it, I do remember a time during that set, I was like, God damn, I'm exhausted. I'm ready to go to bed. <laughs> yeah. um, like, there were so many times where I almost left, yeah. but I didn't. Um Sure. I don't, I, is is there even an appetite for three and a half hour shows? I, it's a good question. It's a great question. Yeah, you're you've been especially if you've been waiting all day. If you're that guy that you know wanted to get on the rail and got there at noon, <laughs> that's a long day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know the the fish people would say yes, and I know that there are uh, plenty in this in this group that would absolutely be all into it but you know would the with the normal Bonnaroo attendee you know the 40,000 that are you know or the 20,000 are there for the Foo Fighters do they really want to you know at the end of their four-day festival I don't know yeah. you know it's maybe rethink a lot um yeah maybe, maybe I do want but I don't know maybe maybe I do want three and a half hours of the Foo Fighters. Maybe I, maybe the tight two and a half that I got was exactly right. the sweet spot. Right. Um, 
It was a good show, know. though, right? I mean, you. It was fantastic. Yeah, it was fantastic. That's so weird that they would replicate something like that. I mean, that's such a risk, you know, because you you know the cliche is you can't go back and it's never you're never going to reclaim what was but sure sounds like they tried yeah and i think they i think honestly i didn't think they they tried and they succeeded it it feels great the the room really feels i I will say this about uh dave grohl he's just so damn good um as a radio guy um you know we're all about teasing um and and theater of the mind and you know creating you know content and he's just so it i can tell he grew up listening to radio because by the third song he was making a joke about fog hat you know because he's so funny on stage and you know he's he's coming in you know with 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 loaded guns he makes a joke about fog hat after the third song after the fourth song he brings fog hat up again and then in the middle of the fifth song, guess what they just happened to break out into? <laughs> yeah. Fog hat. Yeah, nice. <laughs> you know, it's like the, he knew exactly where he was going. He knew exactly how to set it up. Um, he's a pro, man. He's so funny. He's he's so good on stage. He knows exactly what uh, buttons to push. It's a it's a fantastic, fantastic show. Cool. Nice. I'm so glad, glad that I went. Got, yeah, glad you got to go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we have a, uh, a lot to dive into today, our annual Bonnaroo Do's and Don'ts. Guys, you got the list ready? Are you guys ready to dive in? And Yeah, but wait a minute. You saw Spread some players. wisdom? I saw a show I've yeah. been waiting oh, three yeah, years yeah, yeah, to yeah, see. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, do tell. Uh, I saw that Remain in Light show with Jerry Harris, Harrison and Adrian Ballou. Okay. Where was this? Riverbend. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. the Chattanooga yeah. Festival. The yeah. one yeah. I've been Friday talking night. about, and I missed it. Ended up chasing a two and a half or two year old around. <laughs> but go ahead, Taco. I want to hear about it. Well, you know, this was on the Bonnaroo 2020 lineup that was sadly doomed. Mm-hmm. But you know, ever since then, it's popped up on different things, and it finally showed up at Riverbend. And you know, it was originally with Turquoise, and Turquoise within the last couple of years has broken up. But this was obviously like former members of Turquoise. Uh, mm-hmm. Jerry Harrison was there. Adrian Ballou. Um, they played the entire Talking Heads Remain in Light album. Um, it was wow. fantastic. It was so good. Yeah. Did they do anything yeah. other than, did they? The whole album. Did they do anything else other than the album? Nope. Okay. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty cool. For people who don't know, Jerry Harrison, of course, was in the Talking Heads. Adrian Ballou, I think, played on he that, played- but also played a lot with David Bowie and uh, so many other people. Yeah, I mean he's a god Zappa. basically. Yeah, he exactly. he was discovered by Frank Zappa. Right. So you know when you're when you're starting off there, that's yeah, a good place yeah. to start. <laughs> David Bowie, uh, Talking Heads. I mean, pretty much he's just one of those prolific session musicians. Almost any album from the '80s you could probably pick up and find his name in the credits because he right. just you know played with so many people. King Crimson, of course. Yep, yep, yep. That's the one I forgot. Yep. S- so somebody asked me the other day, is there anybody left that, you know, you haven't seen that you, that remains the, like the one you want to see? And of course it's, for me, it's, uh, there's not anybody except for the talking heads. Right. And mm-hmm. we were just never going to get it. Um, so when I saw that they're going to bring stop making sense back to theaters, uh, and put it on the big screen so you can watch it again, I immediately Google searched how I can buy one of those big gray suits. <laughs> and I found a website that I can buy that big gray suit for $90. Um, and That's funny. Uh, believe me, uh, I'm not only going to buy it, wear it to the show, but it's, it's going to be my Mardi Gras outfit next year. That's oh, nice. yeah. Uh, <laughs> make, uh, make Evan Bonnaroo buy it for you. <laughs> yes, I know. Get two. My, yeah. yeah. For every ticket, he's... <laughs> He's spending 10 times the ticket price yeah. or anything that I get. I never uh, saw the so, Talking Heads. That's a good question. Who else? Who's on your list there, Russ? Van Morrison for me, but that's such a Oh, hit that's miss. a good point. It is a hit and miss show, but that's a really good point. Yeah, yeah probably that. Van would be up there for sure. Um, you know, I never I never got to see Bonnie Raitt. I knew she was a Bonnaroo. I totally missed her. I totally whiffed. I think I did years and years ago. And uh, I say think because I didn't – I wasn't that big a fan at the time, but I'm pretty sure I did see her. Um, yeah, there's a bunch like that. Um, most of the ones are 
passed away. Tom Petty, you know, I, I did uh-huh. see Prince. Um, but yeah, Van yeah, I never got to. Probably it for me. I saw Prince twice, actually. Yep. I had right. actually um, had a conversation with a guy the other day who got to see Robert Plant with uh, Allison Krauss sure. here in town. And I bring it mm-hmm. up only because it was such a moment for him. I mean, he had tears just talking about it. You know, you got to see a guy from Led Zeppelin. So same mm-hmm. same for us with McCartney. We all have mm-hmm. that that person, right? That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, let's uh, take a uh, small breather and come back with Bonna Do's, Bonna Don'ts, next on the What Podcast. All right, uh, jump in. Uh, like uh, in years past, this will be a uh, list on the screen. So if you want to uh, just ignore us talking about it, you can just fast forward, fast forward all the way to the end and... Uh, Hit print as PDF. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna. St- I start this like I do each and every time, and you guys know my number one rule. Yep. Don't go hard on Thursday. Never go hard on Thursday. Mm-hmm. Which I'm starting to am- amend a little bit because we no longer get there on Thursdays. Right. We get there on Wednesdays and Tuesdays. So I actually don't mind you going hard on Tuesday. Go hard on Tuesday. <laughs> you got to. You go got hard time on to. Okay. <laughs> you got to, you got time to 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 rehab. In fact, go hard on Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, because Thursday, you just you just need Thursday to be simple. Don't try to do too much on Thursday because uh, Friday and Saturday are going to be so uh, body wrenching that you you want to be on tip in tip top shape. Uh, so just just keep Thursday as a safe space. That's a good point. Okay. I have your yeah. permission to go hard Tuesday and Wednesday. Then. Go hard on Tuesday right. Wednesday. It's okay. You know, the two, No problem. The, the Wednesday thing is fairly new. The Tuesday thing is brand new. I don't know that we have enough data to really know how much that has impacted things. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're now talking Tuesday to Monday. Uh-huh. For this thing, that's a long sure. time for anything. It is. It is. Especially, but to, to be, be fair, though, it's it's not like it's not like you're going to be doing much on Tuesday and Wednesday. No, anyway. you know, there's some scant activities around the campgrounds, and um, you know, there, there's things you can do, of course. But I, I just, you know, for the most part, screw it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know, my Tuesday was the Walmart parking lot. Yeah, you did. And you went yeah. hard. I did, I did go hard. Hard in the Walmart. You raged. You the, raged in the Walmart yeah. parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> but then you were in the you know, the field by Wednesday, right? Correct. Yeah, Wednesday morning. So, you know, you can speak to it more than me. I didn't get there until Thursday. So I know. I had to set up camp all by myself. I was yeah. the only one out there. But if you remember, by Friday night, you also put on your whatever, your dragon or whatever it was, costume, and then crashed for... It's a dinosaur, Barry. Dinosaur, half the day. <laughs> <laughs> All I know um, is I was yeah. panicked for you. I was afraid you were going to die in that heat. I went a little extinct. <laughs> Just a little. Just a little. Just a little. Not, Be not hibernated the way. for a little yeah. bit. Hibernated. Um, but anyway, I, I, to your point, and it, it is legit. Be careful. Realize it's a long week, and you know, you're, people are going to show up. They're excited, especially if you've traveled a long way. You know, the the yeah. The, uh, well, that's that's kind of where I want to start. I want to start with traveling, but before we get there, I, I've got a new late edition because it's 2023. It's something that we uh, have never suggested before, but uh, let's. Be honest about the realistic, uh, about what the world in which we live in right now and be realistic with each other. Uh, it's going to cost you some money, which, you know, is a conversation for another day. I don't know why these are costing money, but uh, find fentanyl testing strips and Narcan. Um, at this point in the world, uh, is you're risking too much. Um, f- buy a pack of 10 if you have to. Buy a pack of 20. Bring some for friends. Um, but don't walk in there and um, d- if you're going to do what you're going to do. Yeah, be prepared. At least, uh, yeah, yeah. Please, please, please don't die on me. Yeah. Okay? That's a good Please one. don't die on me. That's a good one. Um, and I know it's 2023 and it's a, it's a sad place to start, but, you know, it's reality. Yeah. Uh, so before we even get to the, 
the camp stuff and what we do on site. Let's start with getting there. Uh, I've hit, I just I've I've gone through so many people now that have gotten either a dead battery or a flat tire, and maybe because my car has had a dead battery three times in the last four weeks. Uh, bring jumper cables. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yes. Bring jumper cables. Bring however you fix a flat or, um, you know, whatever those, those things are. You know, those. Right. Uh, spare Paco, tire. You can tell them better. Than, it's yeah. Spare tire. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm well versed in this. The you know what? Language, that don't bring right. anything. Just call me. <laughs> yeah, it's called Taco. Yeah. yeah. He is Make my sure AAA. somebody in yeah. your car is a Taco. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 more so than just more so than just jumper cables, Taco. Uh, you turned me on to this battery pack that has been a lifesaver yes, for me for years. Absolutely. And um, yeah. it's it's this brilliant battery that can self jump your car. You won't even need jumper cables. It it will cost you a little bit of money, and I don't know if you can get it by now. But you'd have to go to what, what store did you have to go to to get uh, it? That one came from Amazon, but you can pretty much get them anywhere. You know, for years, jump boxes were these huge, monstrous yeah. things because it had a full battery. But they've shrunk them down now to where they're just basically like it looks like a cell phone charger. And yeah, right. You, you hook the cables up, plug it into your battery, um, give it a spin, and it's enough. And you juice can plug to- anything into this thing. Yeah, you can also use as as a you can charge your phone, you can That's charge your lights, say. you know. Charge your you, phone, you can mm-hmm. run a fan inside yeah. your camp. Uh, if if you can get one of these, yeah, they're really good. I, I would lights, suggest. Fans. I mean, if you if you if you can get one, I suggest bringing two. Yeah. If you like, I bring multiple because it, just in case you do need to use it for a car, you don't want to um, have a dead one, you know. Yeah. After you've used it for the whole weekend, to you know. Uh, power a blender <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah or or a fan i mean that was a, another thing yeah. a lot of people margarita bring... machine <laughs> yeah <laughs> a lot of people the, you will... know the the important stuff the yeah. yeah but they will run things like that and then you don't have to run your car battery um you know yeah that's a good one i was going to suggest that i think one of our also, candidates had one last year and we did we ran our fan if you remember, it yeah. was so hot. So, I mean, it yep. was good yeah. for charging phones me, and everything else. I, and I'm pretty sure you can't bring a generator uh, out in uh, Cineru, but we have plenty of people where we can't bring generators. Please don't bring a generator. Please stop it. I disagree, but, you know, but there I are know, size, I know Barry, there's size limits. Um, but they're you, so loud and obtrusive. But I sleep, Not the new I ones. Like I mean, the old ones were, yeah, it sounded like a lawnmower. Yeah, our they, friend Joe. They are very silent generators. Yeah, the now. Honda the Honda one that Joe brings is very quiet. And it's, you don't it's even know true. It's, running. it's great. But they're very expensive, too. Yes. Get yeah. a friend. Get a, yeah. F- okay. Find a friend to buy Get a Get Evan Bonner to buy you one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they're great. The uh, one I bring is very loud. You're correct. And we only ran it for an hour or so to charge up phones and stuff true. like that. Now that, you, now that you remind me, uh, you, you remind me that Joe's was very quiet, and I remember it actually being pretty small. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. like a size of the thing. Okay. So when it's I was like saying don't bring a generator, I was specifically saying, Barry, don't bring your generator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. I haven't brought it in a couple of years. <laughs> it's Yeah, those big ones that, you know, basically, you know, power, like a boat engine? Yeah. No, I can't. Yeah, I those yeah. things are just yeah. too... I agree, intrusive. but I don't mind it sleeping because it's white noise for me, but I understand. It is loud. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I, I have some sort of major battery uh supply slash jumper cable thing um make sure your car and that's for your car but along those lines bring you can get the little ones for your cell phones too that you can take with you and i mean the one i have will charge my phone three or four times uh and Mm -hmm. it'll run our the equipment that we use uh, which is impressive because barry's phone is a landline (laughs) (laughs) it's It's weird how he's got a rotary phone we're getting on the weekend Uh, but along those lines, and I don't know how to prevent this, but we ran into it, you remember last year, Russ, where mine, I guess, was in the car or something. It was so hot. Yeah. It, it um, didn't work. Uh, batteries are very sensitive to temperature, and if it's too hot, um, they're just not going to work. And so, yeah. Me neither. Sure, I know. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, keep them in the shade. Try to keep them cool, because um, if they overheat, they're useless, just like we ran into 
Yeah, luckily, luckily I, you, you know, and I'll bring a couple too. I had an extra. Right, bring backups. Mm-hmm. Is, is the the tip? Yeah. Back- bring everybody. Bring everybody a a, a battery. Yeah. Bring everybody an extra charger. I got this. Uh, yeah. I don't know where I put it. This teeny tiny little charger. It's brilliant. Um, I don't know where it is. You just can't uh, have enough other- batteries, chargers, everything. Right. You can't. Uh, the other thing uh, before you get there. Um, Barry is the one that made me do this years ago, and I'm so glad that I started doing it. Do not show up at the farm without having already set up all of your gear. Set up everything now. Uh, Get everything out. Wash it. uh, Shake the cobwebs off of it. See if there's anything that's broken or cut. Or missing. Um, Yeah. Absolutely. Missing Missing poles. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Set up camp. I mean, have mm-hmm. spend a day with your guys uh, or your girls and and your your camp mo- your camp mates. Spend a day with them and just set it up somewhere. Set it up in a. Uh, it's, I'm not doing it anywhere around here, but uh, set it up in somebody's <laughs> yard and, and just yeah. see what it looks like and see how um, how your stuff aged over the last year. And make a list um, so you don't forget because you don't want to be ten hours down the road and. I mean, how many people have you talked to and said, I thought you had the, God, what was the one, the example, somebody we had on the show, they all thought the other one had the tent poles. I think it was, it was something like that, you know? Yep. Um, and uh, make a list. And then if you can put it in a place, not in the car or put it, you know, in the, whatever room you have, don't put it in several places. Cause you'll forget. Uh, mm. But pack it, make the list, make the check, and then you know it's all there if you can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a good uh, one. I know, I know that this, we only have two weeks here, uh, but, you know, it's probably a good idea to go on like a couple-mile walk, uh, maybe a, a jog, maybe a little bit of an exercise routine if you haven't started – just get the body moving. Um, I'd hate for you to wake up on, say, June 13th, get in a car and <laughs> yeah, get to the farm and you haven't done any of these things for your body to just be in shock by the time you start activating it. Uh, I know you we're running out of time, but just try to do something that gets, this, uh, gets the body moving right now. Well, since we're still on the – we haven't even left the house yet. Um, we haven't left the house yet. We haven't even left the house. So if you're traveling with people, it's very important to compare lists. Uh, you don't need to bring two of everything if you know if you don't need to. So if somebody has the tent or the tarps or the easy up, you know, make sure and compare. And uh, you're gonna have to figure out at what point to make that check off. You know, if you're each at home making your list and then you're going to meet, you know, whatever Monday morning or Tuesday morning to pack the car. Somebody needs to make sure that, you know, again, whoever had this didn't forget it or assumed the other had it. And to that, and to that point, by the way, every year I have always packed every square centimeter of my car. I could not get anything else in my car. Right. Uh, You need like a 20% buffer. Yeah. Because when you get like getting stuff back in the car at the end of the festival <laughs> yeah. never works out the way that you did it originally, never point. fits. So you end up throwing up and uh, throwing out so much and leaving stuff behind. Uh, it just becomes wasteful and uh, junky and trashy. Yeah, um, that's a great point. Yeah, give, and it's uh, really, give yourself a little bit of a buffer. <laughs> now's, I mean, you've probably been doing it all year, but now's really a good time to make sure you've met with your people you're traveling with. To make sure who has oh, what. Oh, the, the the team meeting is it must yeah, have already that, been done. That's been you done. You need to have a team meeting. You need if you to haven't still had have it. it and make sure. Like I said, for me, I need to put it out on the floor and see it, and you know, touch it and say, "Oh, there's my tent. There's my sleeping bag. There's this and that." And again, really I live pretty close. What you want it to look yeah, like. and I live pretty close, so I can't imagine you know if I was making a long drive and I forgot something important. Um, yeah. So, and you, yeah, you know. Don't be redundant. If somebody don't bring two, if you know don't need to, that kind of thing. Yeah, and also don't fret if you do forget something because True. you know True. you'll you'll make friends. You've got neighbors. People people will help you out. Yep. Yes. Um, okay, so before we even get into the car, other things I want you to uh, 
to bring. I want you to bring uh, things that are going to keep you warm. I can't believe I'm saying it. It's freezing at night. Yeah, it is so cold at night. Uh, do not underestimate how cold it can get. I suggest buying the signature Kirkland line of <laughs> hoodies and sweatpants. Sponsor uh, opportunity. They are very comfortable. They're very inexpensive. It is my favorite hoodie. Um, believe me, you will not. Yeah. Uh, you will not want to freeze on the farm as much as you don't want to go into heat stroke. It is damn near frigid. Yeah, it can, yeah. Get, it can get there. Is that from their signature series? <laughs> this is the signature line, yes. Oh, the Kirkland okay. signature line, yes. Not just Kirkland, that's how you know it's high signature. That's how you know it's high yeah. quality. Yes, yeah. it's the signature line. Yeah. The other thing along like, those lines... Because, is, because, because in 2019, was it 2019 or 2018, like we were shivering. Yeah, it went from... Was, it was so weird because early on, it didn't matter. You know, 3, 4 a.m., it was so hot, you couldn't you know it was miserable and then all of a sudden about 17 or 18 it just something changed i don't know what yeah but yeah i was like i never brought you know long pants or a long sleeve shirt until that year and then i was i mean we started bringing a down comforter pretty much mm -hmm. yeah because it was so cold at night um yeah. you know i just like yeah it was it was almost too cold to sleep and along those lines if you can um, I, I still think those cheap rubber boots that you can get at any box store, they're about just in case it rains, in case it rains, it's because so, it makes walking a muddy farm. You, you can walk right through the puddle instead of having to navigate around it in tennis shoes or whatever. And when 80,000 well, people me, makes more mud and more mud and more yeah. mud. So. That's what brings me to the combination of the next point that I was going to make. Prepare for rain and dust. Yep. But also bring shoes that you're willing to toss. Yep. Um, to your point, uh, those rubber boots are really inexpensive. You may never even use them. But um, yeah, once a year. They're really. But they're ten yeah, bucks, they're, twelve bucks, maybe fifteen. They're, they're where do you get? Yes, them. and I've said this before. Uh, for men, Vans are fifty bucks, right? Put in some good insoles and be willing to to toss them when you're done after the weekend. Um, to me, that's that's the best uh, monetary investment that you can make is spending fifty dollars on a new pair of Vans and new insoles, and mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. donate yeah, it back a, to the farm when you're done. They've done a great job with adding the grass and everything. It's not quite as dusty as it used to be. It's not it, nearly as it dusty. Still yeah, can be. And it, if it rains, again, it becomes very muddy. And a small mud hole becomes a giant mud hole pretty quickly yeah. with that many people. So that's where those rubber boots are are nice to have. And then I've got then I've got a third pair of shoes for you to wear. And I know this is getting a little bit you know shower. dainty. Shower shoes. Uh, shower right? shoes. Yep. So, or shower some shoes. not not just shower shoes, but something you can wear around camp. Yeah. You know something that allows you just to slip on and slip off really quickly. Um, you know, flip flops that you can take into the shower, flip flops that you uh, can just wear around camp and uh, to go from point A to point B. Uh, you know, I, we bought plastic shower flip flops one time um, that worked okay. Um, and then, you know, again, back to uh, these things are probably going to be disposable. Mm -hmm. Let's be or, honest. Or I'm maybe, not, I'm not... maybe some PBR Crocs. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Man. You're brand specific today. <laughs> you are uh, these opportunities. <laughs> I mean, if 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 Taco spots a woman walking down the road in PBR Crocs, wedding bells. You might as well just set up for a wedding. <laughs> yeah, right. Get, get ordained immediately because the wedding's happening. At matrimony house, I'll be whatever. I'll be looking it is for called. that. I'll be looking for that venue. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> it's a what, what plaza is that in? Because uh, tacos there. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, all right. Uh, before we get into actually being on site, is there anything else um, that I had? Try to be careful how you decorate your car. Don't stand out. I mean, don't uh, decorate your car. Yeah. Don't Great decorate. Point. Don't make a you know put a big sign well, on your car. That's a really good one. And I'm going to Bonnaroo. Please pull me over. That's a really good one. Check for whatever. <laughs> That's yeah. a really good. One. I'll tell you. I'll tell you why it's a really good one. Years and years and years ago, in the first few years, they were horrible about that. the mm -hmm. The Manchester police would 
pull anyone over that looked like they were going to Bonnaroo because they were sitting ducks, right? They were yeah. easy targets. You paint our target buddy on Denson, your car. our buddy Denson, always because we would take back roads and we would follow Denson. And uh, Denson is a is a he's a big man, and he's an intimidating man. Um, but he also is a, is a fly fisherman, and he's one of these guys. You know, you have that friend who plays golf who always dresses like he's just got off playing 36 holes Denson always looks like he's about to go fly fishing so every <laughs> outfit that he wears he wears as if he's you know yeah sitting there with, with waders on well his thing when pulled over because we have Tennessee t- uh, tags he would always say, oh, no, 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 we're going past Bonnaroo. We're going to that fishing hole right at the end of Blankety Blank. He knew exactly which one to say. He knew exactly what to – and the, the cop would be like, oh, okay, go on, go yeah. on ahead. What do you get? Say, no, you... this camping stuff is not – this camping stuff is not for Bonnaroo. No, we're going to the fishing spot and staying for the weekend. Yeah, what are you using? What are you using for bait? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And by the way, these guys behind us are with us. Yeah, they look like me. Speaking, yeah. you know, speaking of Denson, yeah. he's a good example. Uh, again, going back to the pack in the car. Seriously, if you can find a guy like a Denson, because God, if I don't he's have a utility it, he belt. Does. He's a human he, utility yeah, belt. He's you know, like we've joked. You know, will somebody will say, you, "Everybody got a hammer." And he'll be like, what do you need, like a 17-ounce roofing hammer? Or are you looking for a ball peen? Because uh, I got both. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> you need a claw? What are you, you looking at? <laughs> for, for, the first, for the first 10 years, I called him the mayor of Bonnaroo because he was like the general store. You could walk up to Denson, and he'd have anything and everything yep. you needed, and he was yep. perfectly willing to, to give it over to you. And like, he would he worked campsites like, oh, yeah. you know, he was running for office. Yeah, a roll of duct tape. Uh, zip ties, zip ties are great. Bungee cords are great. Uh, and you can get, you know, you can go anywhere and get a, a bucket of zip, uh, the bungee cords with the hooks. Those are good for tarps, uh, zip ties. We go through those a bunch. Uh, mm-hmm. those are good to have. What else? A hammer. Well, well, you're getting, you're getting in, you're getting into camp, uh, stuff and, but you got to uh, pack just, that I mean, ahead of time. You got to think about but, that. But I'm going to. But I'll make it clear to you about camp stuff. You guys can talk about the the stuff that actually, you know, makes sense and the necess- uh, necessities of camp. I want you to bring something stupid. Correct. I want you to bring <laughs> stupid. Don't be stupid. That's why we work. Bring together. stupid. Don't be stupid. I want yeah. you to bring something silly and ridiculous every year. I do it, and every year somebody looks at me and thinks I'm crazy, and then by the end of the week they're like, you know what, that was a pretty fun idea. Yeah, no, that's why we work um, well. You worry about the uh, the Bloody Mary bar, and I worry about zip ties. So yep, so we work. So we have a we have a tent that's dedicated just to Bloody Marys. Mm-hmm. We have everybody's cartoon head on a stick. Mm-hmm. That's oversized cartoon head. You can see it over Barry's um, uh, shoulder. That is the family portrait. Yep. We have. You know, seven, eight hundred square feet of uh, grass carpeting. Uh, we've got couches that we uh, that we bring that uh, are easily fold outable for a, a bed if you wanted. Um, we've got a tent that's just a kitchen. We've got everybody's cartoon head on a twister board. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, what? Else? Oh, we we have a we have a mailbox. Mailbox that <laughs> you can you can leave us mail. We have a giant marquee that lights up at night. That's got solar power on it. We've got you know white picket fencing. Anything that makes it stand out and fun, I mean, find a, find something that sets it apart because it yep. will just enhance the overall uh, thing that we, we've we all created here. Absolutely. Well, and how many people have said, oh, I'm glad you had the mailbox or the picket fence because that's how I knew I was close to camp, you know. Yeah. how I knew I was home. Landmark. Yeah. Yep. Comes a landmark. Uh-huh. Well, back in the day, especially early on, there was no landmarks. And I've told this story forever about us, you know, you took... If you took one right to wrong turn, if you took a right instead of a left, you could walk for an hour yep. and you would have no idea mm-hmm. yep. where you were, especially if it was dark because yeah, very little, exactly. not a lot of light in 2003. Good luck, man. Good luck. And that's that's one of the big, big tips. Uh, take a big, walk. Big when, tips. When you, when you yeah. get there, take a walk around and note the landmarks because it looks completely different. At four in the afternoon. Yeah, well, luckily now there's the there's morning. flags. And, luckily now there's flags and signs. I know um, you, that are that are easily markable. But you think you know? Well, I'll recognize that tent, and then pretty soon you realize there's a hundred tents that look just like it, or 
they move yeah. the tarp or something and it doesn't look the same. So find Especially rec- if you what drank is- a lot of soda uh-huh. Uh-huh. all day long. Yeah. <laughs> soda. <laughs> what is what do you think is the worst camp idea we've ever had? Well, the pool, as we've talked about. The pool yep. is a terrible idea. Mm-hmm. And by the way, shoot your uh, worst camp ideas that you've ever had or seen <laughs> at the what underscore podcast. Drop a comment below. But uh, yep. worst camp, camp idea you've ever had. You think it was the pool? What else? Uh, grills. You're not going to cook. You're not going to cook yeah. anything. You know, you're not. The last thing you want to do is make it even hotter. So you're not going to. Bring, bring, yeah, bring prepared foods. First, yeah, first year yeah. I, I prepared as if I'm going into the woods and there's not any. You know, right. I have to cook everything, and I, yeah, terrible right. idea. Wasted a bunch of food. Um, too much look, time just, to just clean keep, up. Keep it to sandwiches. You know, non uh, pre-prepared food. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah. mean, pre-made wraps. Um, right. I, I, I just, I, I, I am, I, I am not one of these guys that thinks you're going to be making eggs in the morning, you know, or drinking coffee. No. It just, just take it to. You don't need to. Please don't yeah. do that. No, <laughs> unless we get chickens. Uh, I mean, if we're talking about food. Yeah, unless we get chickens. Uh, food wise, pre- plan to graze snacks, sandwiches. Uh, you know, small meals throughout the day. Several small meals throughout the day, and then plan on eating inside Cineru. Uh There's good food. Well, the in other. There. Yeah, it it does. It it has gotten considerably more expensive though. Yeah, um, that's so, once a day. You know, it, I, it I is... wouldn't say you know all three meals, but. I will say that back to the back to the bad camp ideas. I really stu- still feel bad about spending all that money on disposable cameras. It's so expensive it and they're useless. Is it worth it? They're just so bad. You know, out of out of hundreds and hundreds of photos we took, we got like I don't know half a dozen that were any good, and they don't I don't even know where they are anymore. It's yeah. just the disposable cameras just do not. If you even remember to up. develop them. That's right. Yeah. And if they don't get lost or wet, yeah. oh, it's just a it's, stupid idea. The other bad idea, and we actually never did it. Actually, no, I think somebody in our camp did it, and we were just – walkie-talkies are useless. Yeah, that was one I think don't I Don't do the walkie-talkies. I think I suggested, and uh, it was not long after – what? There was some national event. And we we thought it would be funny for all of us to have them on our shoulder, and then we realized that was the only thing. Yeah. Then we realized it would. Uh, well, that was Russ's first year, right? Because you got them for us. Twenty eighteen. Yeah, I think I did bring. Some, I'm yeah. pretty sure you oh, got yeah, them. Oh yeah, we for did. Us. Yeah. The idea. Never the idea them. was we never used them. The idea about the walkie-talkie though, we wanted it to make us look like we were working. Right. <laughs> and <laughs> and then we realized it would make us look like we were working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then they put you to work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. People yeah, would ask yeah. us questions. Yeah, yeah, that was um, a bad idea. It, did, it just uh, didn't really work that well. Yeah, I'm trying to remember um, what else. I mean, I know I overpacked early on because, like I've said in the last episode, I think you know I thought I was going to have to kill my own food to eat, so I was afraid <laughs> that, you know we were going into. Um, we only lost one campmate that year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, he was delicious. Yeah, um, I think. I think the tendency is to overpack versus underpack. Yeah, but I'd rather overpack with silliness. Well, I, I don't disagree. Because 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 overpacking with things that are necessities, I feel like I can get. Yeah. I feel like they're, they're, those are plenty available. Uh, not many people have just, you know, spare beanbag couches. No, I, you know? I totally agree. <laughs> I mean, you, yeah, our, you have led the way, and our camp is very comfortable. And all that stuff is funny, but it gets used. That's the other thing. The couch gets the used. The vacuum, vacuum. The vacuum gets used. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The mailbox was funny, and it got used. The picket fence, you know, all that stuff mm-hmm. is uh, – it adds – you're going to be there for a long time, you know. Might as well enjoy it. So. Would you say you're yeah. there? You're there. What else are you going to do? Yeah. You're there. <laughs> hey, has, speaking of bad camp ideas, haven't – has anyone ever had success with the portable shower – didn't have, somebody bring that to camp one year? I brought one 2018. How was it? It's fine. It's I don't think it's a replacement for a real shower. You're not going to you know come out of there feeling, "Boy, I feel refreshed." But just to rinse off, you know, a couple times a day. Yeah, but don't you wouldn't you rather just do that in your sh- in the shower that's provided to us? I think that's what he yeah, that's what he said. It's not the same. It's yeah. Along it's those lines, what I learned uh 
like for the first couple of years, I used the hand sanitizers. I, I hate that stuff. I won't use it anymore. Uh, Just use wet naps. Wet well, wipes. I bring a gallon, you know, thing of water and a bar soap. Um, because I remember the second year I did the whole weekend with the hand sanitizer. And when I left, I went stopped at that uh, McDonald's or whatever right right there by the exit and washed my hands. And it was disgusting. Yeah, it's <laughs> just, just sticky. Absolutely. It creates a film on your yeah, hands. Exactly. Yeah, I don't it want to do it. Yeah. yeah, I just don't. I mean, it's good to have in an emergency, but you're still going to want to actually wash your hands. So bring something, water, you know soap and a towel and wash. I do like that idea of just like having a bar of soap just on the on the ready just to wash my hands when I when I want yep. to. Um that's a that's a really good idea. Yep. Um but that's like but that's a camp soap, right? What is your shower plan? Your shower shower plan. What do you usually go into the camp showers with? Do you have a bag? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I have a, a a bag that What's I. What's your soap situation? Keep, uh, Are you doing a bar soap in in that shower? Yeah, with and fear I have, of it falling. No, yeah, but I and I have the plastic container. You know, you can go to Walmart and get a dollar. They have the the shelves for sh- shampoos and bar soap and you know travel kit type of stuff. I'm telling you, load up on hotel bar uh, yeah. hotel soaps. Yep, and load little up shampoos. You know, they're not much. And then you're not. See, I don't. I don't shampoo. A, well, I don't. I don't. I don't wash my hair. Okay. Well. Yeah. I do. Yeah, but but uh, but you're putting that in a bag and you're hanging it. What yes. Are you, how are you transporting? Yeah, most of the. Yeah, I I just just a grocery bag actually, because it's just easy. Um, and um, uh, it there's hooks in the showers. Mm-hmm. I just okay. hang it there and. Uh, okay. You know. Yeah, I use those little. Uh, Shampoo bottles with suction cups. You can just stick them in the shower wall. I don't know about that. All right. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I just, I just, I, that, I, I can't think of anything worse than touching those walls. Like, how it, in the world am I? Rinse it down. You're in the shower. You can wash the wall. Yeah, we're getting into two. See, I just don't want to think about it. No, I'm, <laughs> I mean, if I'm we're not gonna... here to do maintenance. <laughs> Well, uh, another tip along those lines, and same with the porta potties, is you can figure out the the daily schedule. You know, if you can work it, uh, try to plan your day to hit the porta potties in the showers right after they've been cleaned, uh, if you can. I mean, well, and I, I mean, get up heard, earlier, but, so I do that. You know, heard, but but there's there's I, I'm a two shower a day guy a Bonnaroo, so I I do a shower as soon as I wake up in the morning, and then the last thing that I do at night. Because that 3 a.m. shower is the best, the best feeling in the world. Yeah, it is the best. Literally the best feeling in the world. Yeah. Um, so uh, any other uh, shower ideas? Any other shower hacks that you have? Uh, I mean, just... Other than, other than take them? Take them. Take them. Yeah, I told, I've told you before I, that about my third year, I thought everybody stinks, everybody's dirty. I'm oh. not going to take a shower, and then I couldn't sleep because I stunk what's your, so bad. <laughs> what's, your, what's your favorite towel? What kind of towel do you bring? Oh, I have a uh, microfiber. It's not very big, yeah. but it it's great. Uh, the microfiber really works, yeah. and it doesn't feel like it works because I need an old fashioned towel to like scrub my skin down. But no, the microfiber, if you just fit the padding, it actually really works and it saves a ton of space. Exactly, and it dries yeah. quickly. It's great. That's what I have. Works great yeah. on your car too. Same one I've I've used every year. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, I mean, the only thing I would say about showers to emphasize is try to figure out the schedule. Um, when it's crowded, when it's not crowded, you know, you're going to want a shower. It it's, changes your whole attitude. And, it does. And that 3 a.m. is great or whatever yeah. time works for you. But, yeah, you sleep better. You feel better. Speaking of sleeping, what is your how does your what does your sleep setup look like? Are you an air mattress man? Are you a cot? It's changed. Do you sleep in the back of the truck? It's changed. Uh, it's changed. Yeah, I had a single air mattress for several years, and then I got a second one, and I stack them. And mm-hmm. I like that. Uh, slept well. I'm gonna stop you right. Th- I'm gonna stop you right there. Uh, never ever give me another air mattress that's on the ground. I want the air mattress that's tall. Yeah. Uh, the there's there's just one. a difference between that's a difference between sleeping on the ground and sleeping up. 
a little higher. Yeah. Uh, I sleep like a baby when I'm up on that tall yep. uh, air mattress. That essentially, when I doubled them up, was the same. I, I always slept well. Last year, I got a cot and uh, loved it. How'd that go? Oh, I loved it. And yeah. I didn't even put my tent up. I just put my easy up and then hung tarps all the way around it. See, this is what I was going to say. I think that if there's one thing that um, I've, I've learned over the last 15 years is that if you have a tent, it should be there for, like, clothes and changing, et cetera. I'm talking about, like, a taller tent, not like a, a sleeping tent. Uh, I kind of just, every time I fall asleep in the last, I don't know, seven years, it's been either on a chair at camp or in a hammock, I don't know if I like sleeping in a tent yeah. anymore. I think the one I think thing I that gave, I, I, I sort of like... I gave away last year. Some couple came up, and they had a whole run around with Bonnaroo, whatever. Their tickets didn't... Whatever. And I had an extra, and I, you know, it's like, here, take this tent, you know? I like I like our tall tent because it allows me some version of privacy. Yeah. And if I need to go in and just, yeah. you know, hang out with myself for a second. Uh, but... I think I want to sleep with no walls. The lack of walls and the airflow, I feel like, is much more important come 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm thinking this year I'm going to put, because I got a big cot, and I, I'm thinking you, I'm going to put a what? big cot. Yep. Everybody knows. Everybody talks about how big my cot Everybody's is. Everybody's seen it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I'm just going to put it in the back of the truck and uh, maybe yeah. put the easy up over it. I've got to figure out with Russ how we're going to travel and when and timing and all that but that's my thought right now uh, okay i camped next to a guy for two years we coincidentally not on purpose we just ended up next to each other and he had a massive like a f450 or something but he built a plat plywood platform and put a foam mattress on it and then put yep. tarps over the top and slept open air like yeah. that it was great it was yeah a really good idea I mean, that's essentially what that's essentially what Denson exactly, started doing exactly. midway through. Yep. Uh, much smarter. And if, if, you know, depending on the rental car that I would get, I would hope to get some sort of, like, you know, SUV van that I could just put the seats down and sleep that way. Isn't that what Nick um, does? Doesn't he sleep in the... Yeah, he started doing that, yeah, too. Yeah. It's just easier, man. Um, now, I will say that, like, I, it doesn't give you any sort of uh, stand-up privacy, you know, right. to change clothes and... Right, but you know, well, and and you make the it. opposite of that is Brian, who literally comes in a pup tent that I don't know how he yeah. can turn around. He sleeps in an igloo, I know, and dresses in it and and all that. And that it's well, let's be honest. What does he wear? Good point. You got to get his tube socks you know. on. That's the hardest <laughs> part of his day. He, he he literally looks. He dresses like he sleeps in a pup tent. <laughs> yeah. um, Just changes tube socks and he's good to go. Speaking of speaking of Brian and uh, sleeping in a pup tent and sleeping in general, you guys know my other hard and fast rule. I, what is it? <laughs> uh, taco. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't yeah. hook up. Don't hook up. <laughs> Don't hook up. Don't hook up at Bonnaroo. Don't hook up. Don't hook up at Bonnaroo. Uh, unless unless you find somebody who's taking you back to their hotel, yeah, uh, or has an RV. Yeah. Just you know, and if you are Crocs, if you crush, if you're question, <laughs> if you're questioning why, I refer back to our earlier conversation about the showers and soap. About showering, <laughs> yeah, and the walls and uh, everything else. Look, so, look, some people don't have the hangups like I do about I don't know cleanliness. I don't have um, any hangups. So, I know you don't. So it's it's a lot easier for others, but it just sounds like the worst. Agreed. The worst thing in the world. I mean, I I can. <laughs> It's not that bad. I, I don't know. <laughs> if I'm a, if I'm a single man like Taco, I I could I can I can go, you know, find a date somewhere else. You know, when I when I get back. Well, we can do anything else. <laughs> I'm with you. Um so anything else about camp before we move on? Um, uh, to, oh, I, I will say like is, is camp slash self care. I, I was hard and fast about uh, not doing this. Cause I always thought that you look like some sort of, you know, gymnast about to, you know, jump on the, you know, horse, but baby powder for men is an essential. You, you please do not walk out of the house without baby powder. Yeah. It, underrated. It is, um, 
Yeah, I, I'll be honest with you. I don't like to spray baby powder because that feels so. I don't know. It always burns no. every time I put it on. Yeah. But gold but the bond powder or whatever. Powder yeah, is, whatever your brand. But you're 100 percent right. Make sure somebody just, has that. I wish there's an easier way of putting it on. Make sure somebody has that in your camp. Yeah, that's a yeah. good one. Oh no 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 no. No, don't, don't share. Bring sure your someone, own. I'm not sharing gotcha. baby powder with you. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Make sure you pack your own gold. Everybody bottle. has a different system in which they're squeezing that bottle. Yeah, I enough. don't. Well, fair enough. It's too close to you. Right. Not happening. Okay. Um, I also live and die by peppermint oil. Uh, peppermint oil, when it gets really hot and stopped up, if you have sinus problems, uh, you throw it under your nose or on your chest, you breathe so much easier. The other thing that you can do, it feels like it lowers your body temperature by you know, 10 degrees. If you dip if dip a uh, rag in water and then drop a couple of drops of peppermint oil and put it around your neck or um, on, the, on your low back, whew, game changer yeah. for about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, you're right. I, yep. not WD-40 I, does the same thing. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, and you can and you can get a peppermint oil from you know, you go to Whole Foods. Uh, you can get peppermint right. oil now pretty right. much anywhere. Um, you do need a fan of some sort. Uh, a friend of ours a couple of years ago, maybe in 2019, uh, brought this industrial fan that was <clears throat> out of control. Boy, oh boy, that that was a game changer too. We have talked about, and we really could do it if you hooked it up to the generator. And I and every time I've brought it up, it's been the one thing that you guys have absolutely vetoed. I have an extra air conditioning unit, a window air conditioning unit that we could easily plug into a generator and hit start. I don't know why it's been, you know, vetoed every year, but if you have space, I, I mean, I'm bringing an AC unit. Well, that's guys. probably it's why. Not, well, it's not space. It's, um, I mean, where do you enclose it? You can't just put it out in, you know, I guess you open air. Yeah, I guess you. It's just gonna it's gonna blow cold air at me. It's gonna go. Blo- it, it's gonna blow hot air. At the uh, at the back. At yeah. the back. Yeah. So if you don't have a ducting system to duct the cool air into the spot you want cooled, it's useless. Well, what about one of those portable ones that just sort of sits on my uh, in the floor of my living room? Those still have to dump the hot air out somewhere. There's usually a you know a tube you stick out the window. Yeah, you should. Yeah, but one of those like, what if I just had like one of the? Aren't there ones that like sit in the middle of the room and sort of like cool the room? Yeah, they have to duct yeah. somewhere. They hot, have, yeah. It pulls the hot yeah. air out of the air and blows it away yeah. somewhere. It's removing and the heat, so you've got to move that heat works, out of the so. room. Yeah. Still not a bad This is idea. why I keep getting vetoed. I keep well, getting vetoed on this. That and it's either going to be me or Russ that's going to have to haul it for you. So uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> that's the other thing. I mean, it's, yeah, to your point, I do have a portable air conditioner for the bus, and I have the duct work made to, you know, dump, duct, duct it into the, the top of the bus. Um, and you know, as long as there's a place to plug it in, it, it works great. Yeah. Are you going to have that in the new play or the new bus or the uh, backup? I could, I could maybe adapt that to the, to the backup, you know? Okay. But is um, there going to be a, a constant source of power? Yeah. It pulls a lot of power too. That's the other thing. Yeah. Mm. But okay. anyway, that's a luxury. Right, bad idea. No, it's bad. I know. I like luxury items. I know. Um, the other thing I, I, we, I totally forgot to mention uh, because look, I don't know what is your what is your go to hangover remedy. Don't PBR. don't get hungover. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> PBR. Get back on that horse first don't, thing in the morning. That's mine. Don't get hungover if you don't stop drinking. <laughs> you're not you're not a you're not a Pedialyte man or uh, I don't know orange juice. What, what you don't have any sort of like trick. Uh, open that first can of Bush as soon as I wake up. That's usually mm-hmm. Yeah, mine's mine's a bloody mary. Just level it back off, but I don't get yep. hung over because it's a bad idea to be hung over on the farm. My, I don't, I, I know it's the I've worst feeling in the world. Yeah, it literally is the worst feeling in the world because as soon as you wake up, the heat hits you so bad and you feel so nauseous. Um, yep. Taco, you were there your first year. You went so hard and you were out the whole day. Yeah, I did miss um, part of a day. Most of the day, yeah. I don't think that was that wasn't necessarily hung over though. Yeah, it's a bad idea. I mean, in the heat, the farm, and porta potties. 
just let just remember that when you think, do I want that next drink? Do I need one more? Yeah. Um, yeah, don't, uh, my, yeah, blood, that's why we have an entire Bloody Mary tent is because me and Nick both get over hangovers the exact same way as with Bloody Mary. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, speaking of, speaking of that, uh, Nick, God love him. I really do think that if you are not, I mean, you can bring your own, um, you know, fanny pack, but if you want to, you know, travel light into Cineru, you need your own bag, man. <laughs> You need a bag man, and Nick's always been my bag man, so we're, we're tied to the hip. Uh, everywhere he goes, I go. Everywhere I go, he goes because he carries all of our gear. <laughs> he carries everything that we need in his bag. Um, well, he's used to it. He's got a baby, so he's already got all that carrying yeah. stuff. Yeah, And he has a ch- child. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's got you and a child. <laughs> yeah. And he can get how many cans of beer in that? That bag? I don't know what you're talking about, Barry. I don't know what you're talking about. That's it never seemingly never bottomless beer in there. <laughs> We've never carried eight to twelve beers in our into center. We've never done that. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, you need you need a bag, man. Um, the other thing I, I actually forgot to mention about camp before we actually get into the day by day specifics. Uh, when you get there. And I'm guilty of this. You're going to want to rush and do everything you can to get camp set up immediately. Uh, I'm telling you, after a few years of that, we really start taking our time now. And the the one year that we didn't get set up, we we got we had to get enough set up for the night just to get us through the night. Right. But finish setting up like in the morning. Um, Take your time setting up camp because uh, you're gonna you're gonna burn out. Especially if you get there in the middle of the day, it's going to be so hot, and you're going to try and push so hard to uh, to set up. Just take your time, and if you take your time, if you can, pay attention to where the sun is and where it's going to be, especially when you wake up, and also pay attention to where the uh, the street lights, uh, the portable lights and generators that they have are. I think was it. The three. We always three years end ago. up camping right next to that goddamn light. Right. It is so obnoxious. Right. And uh, depending on where it's pointed, you know, if it comes uh-huh. into your tent um, or where you're sleeping or or you when you get up, you know, like that one year we thought we had a great spot and the sun hit us. This you know, as soon as it came up, it was right in all of our all of our tents and all of our eyes. So if you can pay attention to that, you know, orient your tent or whatever, um, that way, it's hard to think about when you first get there because they kind of point to you and say, go here and do this. Go, go, go. And you, and you feel like you're so rushed in that moment, but really just give yourself some time. And, you know, I know that this is sort of anti code, but you know, we brought police tape um, just because, uh, for that exact reason, we don't really know what's like what we want to do, but we just need a little bit of time and space. And you know, I, I hate the idea of somebody like cramming in and crowding um, us while we're trying to figure it out. Uh, the other thing too about about booze, I know this is probably not the best thing to say out loud. There is, if you follow their guidelines, what you can bring and can't bring, I believe there still is a quote-unquote booze limit you can bring in. Uh, ignore that. Yeah. They're not <laughs> counting your beers? No, nope. They're not counting they your have. beers. They have. I had a friend of mine a few years ago, they took one of his 24-packs because he had a pile of them, uh, which brings me to um, get everything that you can into a cooler as before you get there, right? And then pile on top whatever extra that you need, but put everything into a cooler with ice on top of it. They're not going to dig through your ice cooler. No, and no, no glass. Um, glass is the big yeah. no-no. Yeah, don't bring it. Nothing, thing, don't bring glass nothing in glass. Um, uh, but yeah, he had he had his he had a twenty-four packs taken from him from one of the things. That's, I probably just a guy wanted his beer. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Um, all right, so. That's pretty much camping, I think, for the most part. Along those lines, and it's been our experience, it depends on when you get there and who's running the gate and all of that. Don't be an idiot. If you're bringing something um, illegal, 
don't leave it out in the open. Don't make them be the bad guy. They don't want to be the bad guy. They're not trying to be. But if you're very stupid and obvious, then they're going to be the bad guy. So be smart. Um, you know, like Brad said, they're not going to unpack. Well, we've I've seen both. I, you know, we've had people who they did go through their cars, you know, pretty thoroughly. And then like me, it's, you know, whatever, go. So it just mm-hmm. depends on the time of day and yeah, be nice, be cool. Realize they've been out there for however many hours in the hot sun. So that, yeah, if you well, got that a spare was bottle be... of water, share a bottle of water with whoever's yeah. checking in. Well, that was my next uh, Bonna do. Do something nice for someone every day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever you give to the farm, it will come back to you uh, in, in another way. Uh, do something nice for somebody every day, no matter uh, what you might be going through, because that's the whole spirit of the entire festival. Yeah. Attitude is huge. I mean, that's the, basically the theme. It sounds so cliche, but just be cool. Not, not just because of the heat, but just be cool. You know, don't be an asshole you, you, and you have, you you'll have, be treated well. You have 70,000 new friends. Yep. Everybody's there mm-hmm. to love you and, and uh, treat you with respect, so treat them uh, with respect and, and care and love as well. Um, one of the things that uh, I figured out pretty late in the game on this, so I have a clear uh, phone case. I put a note in the back of my phone in the, inside the case, piece of paper says it found this phone. If you find this phone, please call this number. So I put like a little note. And on the front, though, I take a picture of the lineup every day. Mm-hmm. And then first thing in the morning, I make that the background of my phone so that I don't waste and kill my battery. And I can just look at the I can look at the you can see right now my background is crawfish. But uh, I make my background of my phone. The that day's lineup uh, saves a ton of battery uh, throughout the day. Yeah. Yeah. You're not, and, and along those lines, cell service is going to be horrible. Don't, you know, go ahead and tell your people back home you're not going to be checking in every hour. Uh, yes. It won't work. Especially with 80,000 people. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So just tell them you're fine. You're going to be fine. No news is good news. You know, don't don't expect me to call and let you mom and dad or whoever know you're okay because it's, it's really horrible. Um, and really, you know. Honestly, you know, to that point, though, the only news – or slash things you should be worried about is in the Bonnaroo newspaper. Yeah, well. Uh, do they do the Bonnaroo newspaper they, they anymore? Do it anymore. Just so. un- un- unplug from all of yeah, the exterior stuff, say. right? Yeah. yeah. Just unplug. Yeah, and along those lines, do call your dad before you leave. Uh, Sunday will be Father's Day, and you know you might oh, not get a chance good to tip. Uh, shout him out. So yeah, very good yeah, tip. Don't forget, that's a good one. Yeah, I mean, if you, you know, early morning before everybody else gets up and starts on their phones, you can maybe get through. Uh, but yeah. Just let everybody, you know, at home know you're okay. Um, and uh, and while you're there, take care of everyone else. I mean, that's the big thing. Even I mean, I, I do know. suggest, uh, for, for guys like us, because we're, we're usually working there, but um, if you have one of those internet booster things, bring that yeah you know if, if you're somebody that actually needs to you know interact with it um yep. what's the one thing you bring to camp that uh is unusual the thing that's specific to barry the thing that you can't find anywhere else uh i don't know if it's like that uh but I, i'm conflicted on this because my best tip from the start was to, to get a case of uh bottled water and freeze it and put that in my cooler and use that as my ice because when it melts, it doesn't get, you know, everything wet and soggy. And you can also drink it. But I just, the idea of that many plastic bottles going into the landfill anymore, I, I, I haven't found a, a solution for it because mm. I love that tip because it works mm-hmm. great. Every mm-hmm. year I've done it, I've had, you know, three, four, five, whatever bottles remaining that were still had ice in it so it works great but it does but uh i just that that's a lot of plastic bottles that's yeah that's the what about ta- what about taco what's your uh secret bonnaroo hack uh giant inflatable rubber duck <laughs> <laughs> okay 
I was gonna say Can, butterscotch moonshine, but you know. Yeah. Oh, what, okay. I didn't where, know if we could we mention getting, that or not. Yeah. Where, where are we taking this rubber duck? <laughs> You'll see. Okay. Well, you guys, you guys know what mine is. Here we go. Hang on. The giant mirror. It's the yoga wheel. Yeah, the mirror. Oh, it's the yoga, yoga wheel. wheel. Yeah, the yoga wheel. There That's it is. New. The uh, the secret to a healthy back. Yeah. The yoga wheel. Yeah, you... um, the yoga wheel is uh, uh, a wife special. I didn't know what it was when she brought it into the house. I thought it was the stupidest thing I'd ever seen in my life. And I was like, what, do you just roll around on this? But you basically put this on the ground, and you lay your back over it, and you just roll all of that stress, all of that tightness out, I'm telling you, it is a lifesaver. Um, it is worth every penny that you can uh, spend on it. What are these things, like 50 bucks or so, Hillary? Hillary? Um, they, 50 uh, bucks? Yeah, I know. It's here we go. But here, it's a lot of PBR. <laughs> but here's what you – if you can't get one in time, if you don't have one, if you don't want to spend the $50, I suggest – and she will love hearing this. Learn some very basic yoga poses, like down dog or a forward fold. Uh, learn some of those like very basic things because I'm telling you, uh, waking up in the morning or about two o'clock at night, uh, your body will will appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Uh, even you, Taco. Even you, Taco, can do a forward fold. Yeah. Even only, you can do uh... down. Even only you could Hillary do down dog. Here. Yeah, if only Hillary were here to uh, instruct me. Taco, I saw you. I saw a picture of you this weekend in lotus pose. The man is flexible. The man can uh, move that body better than you'd imagine. Um, I'm telling you, it will it will really really change. Uh, All thanks to that rubber duck. How how much how much you're hurting on a regular basis? <laughs> yeah, I mean simple things like that. The essential oils is a good tip. Things like just doing some yoga and stretching. Um, a good chair, you know, cause you're going to spend chair. a lot of time in camp early in the morning and early afternoon, a good chair. Can I, can I tell you about that good chair tip? Um, the worst thing that you can spend a dollar on, and I know they're cheap and I know you can get a million of them for like $10. Those dick chairs are, are worse than you could ever imagine. They're uncomfortable, they're hot, and they will hurt you yeah. if you sit in one long enough. Yeah. I hate those dick chairs. I would rather sit on the ground. Yeah, they're, um, they're good. Chairs? T- what, what are you saying? The the dicks chairs. Dicks the, chairs. Yeah, the dicks sporting good chairs. You know those collapsible those, in those a bag chairs. Collapsible oh, you just mean like in a, a bag, bag chair. chair. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, they're great like, for a, hate they're great for a Wait. two hour soccer game, but you bring eight, a chair for your dick. <laughs> Well, Barry brings a cot for his. <laughs> Size matters. I'm so confused. <laughs> I, I'm no, telling you, like, right. those, those bag chairs they are, are they're terrible. Awful. Yeah. At the end no of the support. day, your arms from, yeah, yeah. And your back is covered in sweat. Yep. Um, I hate it. Uh, I refuse to sit in one. Uh, spend the money on a good chair. Yeah, they're convenient. Uh, the I, idea is good, but. For, especially if you're going to be there, you know, Tuesday to Monday. Yeah, good chair. We spent, key. we spent a, a, I know this, this is an investment. I know it's, it, it sounds like we're, we're making you spend a lot of money here, but uh, we spent a good chunk on a really nice fold out chair. And I slept in that every day one year. Yeah, that's every day. what our friend Mike Dewar, you know, sleeps in. A, basically, it's similar to the cot that I have now folds three ways so you can raise the back and the feet and lower so yeah it's worth it it's worth it it's yeah. tough to pack it eats up a lot of space but you're going to spend a lot of time in that thing uh my final suggestion and i know this is another thing that costs a little bit of money don't bring a cat oh what a baby don't bring, don't a, cat. bring a cat whatever you do do not bring a cat uh <laughs> I have I have gotten to that age, Barry, where I I need earplugs. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm starting. Oh, it's starting yeah, to hurt. Yeah, great tip. Yeah, the foam. Yeah, you can get a bag of them for nothing. You can get that, but I would suggest I've gotten to the point where I, I've used enough of the foam to know that I think I want professional. Are you talking about for the show earplugs. or for sleeping or both? For the, for shows, okay. but yeah, you're right. The foam for sleeping is actually a a, a really underground secret. Yep. 
uh, tip. That's a really good one. You gave me that a few years back. It really helps, especially when you have a guy in the camp next to you who loves karaoke at four o'clock in the morning. Yeah, or snores like me or who whatever. Yeah, it wipes. You can still hear if you know there's an emergency or something, but you know you you it helps sleeping. It's great. Yeah, those are good to have. Uh, I, I'm really I'm really into the uh, ear show earplugs at yep. this point. I'm I here. think I it's um I hear you. I have I've gotten some. to the yeah. age where it's and, starting and, it's starting to hurt. Well, don't wait till you're that that age. Take yeah. care of your hearing now yeah. if you're. If I you're know. Not, I just yeah. I've, I've been in I've been in radio my entire adult life. So for 23 years I've been yeah, I've been wearing headphones. Yeah. With you know. Yeah, it's like it's like hydration. If if you're thirsty, it's too late. If your exactly. ears are hurting, it's too late. So yeah, and those you can get them. You can get. You know, off the shelf, or you can get uh, professionally made ones, but they yeah. are good to have. And I, and I know there's been some obvious stuff in here, like stay hydrated, that we haven't uh, mentioned. But come on, let's let's have some common sense here. We've been doing this long enough. Yeah. Um, Start now. And then the final the the final tip that I have for you is, uh, and we've said it in so many words a million times: don't stick to a schedule. Have a have a general idea. Um, see somebody that you would never see go see something you've never heard of uh, find find the find the two or three things that you absolutely want to do a day but then the rest of it just sort of let it happen let the magic sort of come to you I, because it will i approach it, it really a little will. different i i think spending the 11 and a half months planning is a lot of fun just go through the schedule make your list but then what Brad just said, once you get there, tear it up because you're not going to stick to know. it. You can't do it. Nobody I don't know if, can. I don't know if you can hear that. I don't know if you can hear that in the background. That's not someone mowing their yard. That is a cat purring. <laughs> well, you probably hear a two-year-old thumping around upstairs now, too. So He was knocking at the door. He wanted to come in. So Oh, that's so yeah, cute. That's what, awesome. is, yeah. what is the cat's name? Sebastian. Nice. Where did this cat come from? Uh, it's Haley's cat. Did she leave a car as well? Is it uh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, have, you, have you traded? Have you traded cats for cars now? <laughs> are no, we doing? Are we doing companion I'm, animals uh, instead of cars these yeah. days? No, this is temporary. Let's just say I'm okay. watching the cat for thirty days. Okay. All right. Good. That's how the I love this. Uh, yours too, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, how cute. Uh, that's so. Cute. Um, all right. I think that that pretty much hits my. In- I've, I've gone through my entire list here. I've got a whole uh, list of. T- uh, tips and yeah the only thing i would and, add and is, again, and don't. emphasis on be cool clean up after yourself uh respect the farm respect your neighbors uh keep your camp clean throughout you're good don't wait till the end of the i mean what was it that guy across from us that just put his trash out by the road and you know just be respectful of everybody around you. yeah he thought a waste management truck was coming by yeah, any moment i mean just mm-hmm. be cool i mean Act like you've been there before, and act like you want people to act around you. So, and every yeah, that yeah. cat's purring. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So, so to to that point, and and not to be a t- tad sanctimonious about this, but the farm is not yours. Right. The farm is is all of ours. Um, and uh, let's try and uh, stay respectful for it, so that we can have it forever and ever. Yeah. Because, uh, you know. Yep. Yes. Please yep. do. Along those lines, I mean, it's, it's, you talked about the showers. It always amazes me. It's like, who is it that trashes them? If you just clean up after yourself, you know, it shouldn't be that big a deal. There's not a lot of, but anyway, that's me being sanctimonious. Yeah. Just act yeah. like you've been there before. That's all. Uh, all right. Anything, uh, anything else, guys? I think that's it uh, for from me. From these Bonnaroo experts. Yeah, that's pretty full. Okay. Pretty good. All right. tips. Yeah, that's, a, that's a lot of tips. All right, guys. It's uh, getting. Crunch time. Yep. It's getting crunch time. Yeah. Barry's got weeks. a fresh haircut. Uh, Taco's got a cat. Yep. Yeah. And uh, we have a couple of a whole good, new bus. We have a couple of good shows coming up, too. We sure do. Yeah. Very, we'll very have uh, more on that it. soon. Yep. Very excited. It's, uh, it's crunch time, and, and as we get closer, uh, we may just have you know some of the biggest shows we've ever had. So until then, we'll talk to you next time on the What Podcast. Love you. Bye. Consequence Podcast Network.